Now until a few years ago, hybrids were frightfully expensive and unless you were really rich or very environmentally conscious, you didn't even consider them. But with pollution taking over this country, the government decided to make some steps and give hybrid cars some incentives. Well, that did sprout a whole host of micro-hybrid cars around, but the full hybrids, battery pack and all, was still quite elusive. Well, that's until Toyota decided to bring the Camry into the country, which gained quite a bit of popularity. But it still faced stiff competition from equally fuel-efficient and similarly priced diesel cars around. Well, with diesel taking center stage for all the wrong reasons, bans being imposed, policy being unsure, consumers have started looking at hybrids as a viable option. And of course, the Honda Accord has jumped in on the bandwagon. Now, there's a big difference between the Toyota Camry and the Honda Accord. Whilst the Toyota Camry is manufactured in India and can avail of the incentives, the Accord is an import. And this creates a big difference in price. Let's take a look. The fully imported Accord Hybrid, and unfortunately, and perhaps unfairly, is subject to the full spectrum of Indian taxes. And that means it costs a hefty 37 lakh ex-showroom Delhi. Toyota, on the other hand, assembles the Camry Hybrid at its plant in Karnataka, which qualifies the sedan for incentives under the government's faster adoption of manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles in India, or FAME Indian scheme. Resultantly, it's available for a far more reasonable 30.9 lakh. So if it were purely on price alone, it would be game over, story over, and we'd declare the winner right away. But that's not how we do it at AutoCar. We put cars to the road test, and we're going to give the Honda Accord a chance to prove whether it's worth that much more. Now, these cars are all about fuel efficiency, so let's begin with what's under the hood. The Accord system is quite radical. It uses a lower-powered 145HP 2.0-litre petrol, but a more peppy 135 kilowatt or 184 HP electric motor. The real talking points, however, are the car's three drive modes. The first EV mode has the Accord running solely on electric power drawn from the battery. As the battery depletes or speed increases, the system switches to hybrid mode. Here the engine steps in, but not to drive the front wheels directly, however, but to power a generator for the electric motor. So in effect, in this mode, the Accord functions as a range extender with motive power still supplied by the electric motor. Where the Honda also differs is how it uses its petrol motor. The latter connects with the front wheels at around 80 km when the system switches to the third engine mode. When this happens, a clutch locks the engine to the front wheels. The electric motor is only used to add power in extreme circumstances, such as when you go flat on the throttle. And then you get a total of 215 HP. Since the engine only directly powers the driven wheels at cruising speeds, Honda has uniquely opted to use only a single speed transmission with the gear ratio in question, equivalent to a regular gearbox fifth or sixth gear. The advantage of this arrangement is minimal mechanical losses via the transmission. The Toyota system on the Camry is a little more conventional, comprising of a 160HP 2.5-litre four-cylinder petrol and a 105kW or 143HP electric motor. The Camry can run in full electric mode only at low speeds and on mild throttle inputs. Up the pace and the system switches to a combination of electric and engine power for a total output of 205HP. Both sources driving the front wheels via a CVT gearbox. The battery pack gets its power via regeneration. That is when the car is slowing down or cruising. But to find out how all that tech works, we put these cars out on the road through traffic cars, city runs, highway runs and the whole hog to find out just how efficient it made these cars. The real world figures of the Honda Accord blew us away and we actually did a recheck. It gave us 17.4 kilometers per liter in the city and that's way ahead of the Camry, but it's also amongst the best petrol car efficiency figures we have ever recorded, and I'm referring to cars way smaller too. The highway figures were equally respectable and round two clearly goes to the Accord. Get into the car and crank up, and apart from that little tone that lets you know that the car has actually started up, and an indicator on your screen that says ready to drive, you will not believe it. Because we're so used to the hum and the thrum of a motor starting up, here there's none. This is like stealth mode. 
The Honda is clearly quicker to replenish its batteries in average city driving. As a result, the car goes longer in full EV mode. The caveat here is you have to be very gentle with the throttle inputs to keep the Accord running as an electric vehicle. Press down any harder on the pedal and the engine comes to life with the system switching to hybrid mode. When that engine kicks in, you can also tell it is the noisier one. The Camry's engine is more refined. However, you will rarely have the Accord go into engine mode in city conditions. Now even on the go, it's really hard to tell when the Accord makes its transitions from mode to mode. It's so smooth and seamless and it's only the indicator on the screen in front of you that lets you know. And that's until you put your foot down on the accelerator for some hard acceleration. That's when you begin to hear the motor. The Camry may not have the Accord's electric range, but its EV mode does allow you more throttle inputs before it hands over the reins to the engine. The Toyota's engine runs far more silently for the most part, but get the Camry excited and there's no escaping that there's a CVT gearbox in the picture. Revs rise faster than corresponding rise in speed. Now the Accord's engine is the quicker of the two on the go and that's proven because it is quicker to the 100 mark. But of course, there is also that little button, the sport mode. One little press on it and it just heightens all the responses and makes driving a little bit more fun. The Accord went to the 100 mark in 8.32 seconds compared to the Camry's 9.2 seconds. But it's not just that, it's just the overall sense of refinement in the cabin that is good. It's everything, whether it's the driving, whether it's the way the cabin shuts the outside world. It's just a very smooth experience. So round three goes to the Accord 2. Now there's not much between the two steering, both of them are really light. So maneuvering in and out of traffic gaps in city conditions is very easy but if I had to differentiate between the two and pick one I'd say it's the Accord steering that I prefer because it just gives you that little bit more of sense of security at higher speeds. They do feel like cars that would rather cruise than be driven hard. Well that's a lot of the experience from behind the wheel but these are premium executive sedans and most of the owners will probably be seated in the back seat. So it's time to get there and check that out. I'm going to just pull over where our crew is stationed and get someone else to drive while I sit in the back seat. Rahul, can you come and drive? Well, the back seat of the Accord was always a very, very comfortable place to be. And it still remains so, there's loads of leg room, there's good amount of headroom, the bench is wide enough for three passengers to sit, there's good enough space for the third passenger's leg room as well. The seats themselves are softly cushioned. So yes, this is a back seat where you wouldn't mind kicking back and enjoying the long journey. Now the Camry's back seat opens up a good amount of room as well, there's lots of leg room, good amount of headroom. Uh, three abreast will be comfortable, in fact possibly more so because this bench is a little flatter. The only thing is that the seat is a little lower to the ground than in the Accord. Now both cars have the adjuster to move the front passenger seat forward so that you can open up more leg room for yourself should you be sitting on that side. But what the Camry has additionally is the sun blinds on the side and at the rear so that shuts all the heat out and you can be comfortable. Now as far as ride quality goes, again it's a very very close call between the two cars. Both of them are comfortable back seats to be in. But again, if I have to pick the winner, I will hand it to the Accord after having sat in them back to back. It just has that slightly more pliant edge over the bumps and potholes, keeping you that little bit more comfortable. Even on the inside, it's the Accord that has the better ambience. It's far better finished and the multi-layer dash replete with the dual screens also has a more modern air about it. Like the Camry, there's no tachometer on the Accord, but it really doesn't need one. Remember, the engine only comes into play to drive the wheels at higher speeds. 
the speedo doll and information display do add to the look. There's also a certain feeling of solidity about the Honda Accord. The Camry is well built too, but the cabin just doesn't feel special enough for the price. The dash isn't anything out of the ordinary, the touchscreen looks like an aftermarket add-on and there's way too much shiny forward around. The old school shift gate is also at odds with the more modern instrument cluster that houses a color display. What Toyota has done is equip the Camry Hybrid rather well. In addition to the adjustable rear seat backrest, there's also three zone climate control, audio controls in the rear armrest, electric rear sunshade, ventilated front seats, and power steering adjust. The Accord has some highlights of its own too. The driver's seat gets a memory function, there's a sunroof, satellite navigation is standard, and the infotainment system also comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Both cars get seven airbags and a whole host of electronic safety aids. The Accord additionally features what Honda calls Lane Watch. Here, the center screen relays images from the left side mirror, thus giving a visual of any blind spots when you turn the indicator to the left. An important point to bring out is that only the Camry features a full-size spare. Honda supplies a puncture repair kit with the hybrid. Even so, it's the Accord that has the marginally smaller boot with the battery pack eating into luggage space. Now before we go to the final tally, let's just consider how these cars look. The Camry, well it's a smart car, but it's a little plain. There's no denying that it's the Accord that's more modern, it's more sleek and it's generally the one that's more desirable to look at. And that's just it. The Accord is more desirable on almost every count. And let's not forget that astounding fuel efficiency figure that it returned. Now we asked ourselves at the beginning, would the price play the differentiator? And in this case, it is a resounding yes. And that's because the Camry makes it a very close call. It also does an excellent job of being a luxury car and a hybrid. So in this battle, considering its price, it's definitely the Camry that's the winner. Now. Would this verdict change if the Accord were to be locally assembled and bring down its price? Most definitely, yes.